Yesterday in this video, I talked about how Devin Booker's playing style is the most similar to Kobe's given he's a shooting guard, he can fade away in the post and get shots in the mid-range. But this video shows you the reasons why, in his own way, Stephen Curry really gives me flashbacks of watching Kobe Bryant. After he didn't get this foul call, Curry got the angriest he's ever been in a while, and he made Staples Center, I mean Crypto.com Arena, for a Clippers game as loud as it's been in years. And this was on a Sunday matinee. Here's how the top MVP candidate is on a Mamba-esque run and the rarely found qualities shared between both Steph and Kobe. Before continuing, only 16.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're looking for dope NBA content like this, subscribe if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for 50k subscribers, you guys are the best Hoops Talk community on YouTube, much more content on the way. Kobe had me assuming that there would be no one I would witness in my lifetime who was a clutcher, more ruthless competitor than him. Before he tore his Achilles late in the 2012-13 season, a 34-year-old Kobe was putting the failed super team Lakers on his back and carrying them into the playoff race, averaging 27.3 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, on a field goal percentage that was his highest mark since 08-09. I'll never forget when my Raptors were trying to make the playoffs for the first time since 08, back in 2012-13, and Kobe had the clutchest game I've ever witnessed to this day from any player. You could tell this was an aging Kobe, it wasn't his prime days by any stretch. I'll go over his prime in a minute. But on this night versus Toronto, something special was in the air at Staples, and Kobe looked like the best version of himself ever. LA was down 5 with 150 remaining. My rap seemed to be in a good position to take it home. After failing to get Alan Anderson to fall for the pump fake, Alan does a perfect job of smothering Bryant, but despite the heavy traffic, Bryant somehow still puts the perfect arc on this shot and wills it in to put LA within two. But the Rudy Gay-led Raptors still had a four-point lead with 31.7 seconds remaining. This time off the inbound from Steve Nash, Kobe uses a slight push-off catches the pass, and releases a beautiful high-arcing hop jumper from the corner right over the top of Anderson, just stone-cold cash in the clutch. But my raps were supposed to make the playoffs this year and save GM Brian Colangelo's job. Bruh. They still had a three-point lead with 8.4 seconds left. This time, more beautiful footwork to fake out his defender off the inbound from the Mamba. He gets Amir Johnson and Rudy Gay leaning, only to sell Amir Johnson on a pump fake and hit a contested triple directly in the face of Rudy Gay. Three straight contested three-pointers with the game on the line, which got the game into OT, where Kobe drove in for the game-winning layup. It was heartbreaking watching this game live after a 15-year-old version of D-Flow had stayed up for the West Coast game, but even though I was just hitting puberty, I still had the wherewithal to respect the greatness that I was witnessing. Then, to get a taste of how utterly clutch and all-time great the five-time champion Kobe Bean Bryant really was, there's straight up a 42-minute highlight video on YouTube making up the daggers that this man knocked down in the clutch throughout his career. 42 goddamn minutes. Kobe's prime days in the early to mid-2000s saw an utterly polished, supremely athletic, once-in-a-lifetime competitor and clutch player win two scoring championships and average at least 27 points in a ridiculous nine different seasons. Rest in peace to one of the greater players and icons that not only the NBA has seen, but pop culture in general has ever seen. There's a lot to live up to legacy-wise when it comes to the Black Mamba, and while I'm not saying Steph is on the same level as Kobe all-time quite yet, and I'm not even saying his playing style resembles Kobe, what I am saying is, the competitive nature with Steph's willingness to get his team over the top at all costs individually, that's the area where he and Kobe are in the same sentence. In terms of their efficiency and scoring rate, of course from deep range, Curry has the advantage, However, from the fields overall and their scoring in general, it's extremely close between Kobe and Steph. While Steph owns the highest single season field goal percentage between the two at 49%, Kobe shot at least an impressive 45 plus percent from the fields in 12 different seasons. 
The overall efficiency advantage, however, goes to Steph because Curry's already put up that aforementioned total of 45 plus percent shooting seasons in seven less career years than the Black Mamba. In terms of pure scoring, this one goes to Kobe. 56 games in the 2005-2006 campaign saw a prime Kobe post at least 30 points. This was the year where he put on the single greatest scoring performance of all time considering there's no tape of what Wilt did and a ton of short white guys played back in Wilt's era. No disrespect to Chamberlain's 100 point game, but Kobe's 81 against my raps, while I was too young to appreciate at the time, just watching it back on tape was the most dominant scoring performance ever. The most 30-point games Curry has ever put up in a single season is 40, which came in his second straight MVP winning campaign in 2015-16. In 2021-22, Steph's out to pass Kobe's personal best record of 56 single-game 30-point outings, as Steph already has eight of them with three-quarters of the season remaining. More importantly, Curry may be on the path towards ring number four, which would put him one behind Kobe and two behind MJ. Don't forget, Steph's still 34 and based off his lack of lower body injuries over the last few years, which he struggled with so much to begin his career, and also considering his game is based behind the three-point line and isn't totally based off athleticism, I could see Steph competing at around this level for another five plus years. Curry has a chance to cement himself as the greatest player of all time with a few more rings, given the roster around him. Just like Kobe's passing was underrated, Steph's defense is something people completely overlook about him. Curry ranks number one in the NBA in defensive rating among point guards this season, and he ranks number 30 among all players in total deflections. For the superstar that he is, the lack of ego is shown off with his 51 total deflections over just 20 games. Most number one options don't dig down defensively like Steph, but unfortunately many casual fans view Curry as a liability on that end of the floor. In addition to being an underrated defender, Steph's also an underrated board getter. Steph ranks number 8 at his position in rebounding and he's averaging a career high 5.8 boards. Again, doing the dirty work. You don't expect that from your number one option, but that's what he does. Because of Curry's all-time great shooting and Kobe's natural clutch bucket getting, that makes us forget about the other qualities that Steph brings to the table and what Kobe brought to the table. What's most similar between the three-time champion Curry and the five-time champion Kobe is how even when they're on the road, they can get the crowd going absolutely insane. Steph's fan base is really starting to remind me of the crowd that Kobe had established in his later years. Like Kobe, Steph thrives off the negative energy thrown at him throughout the game in an opposing team's building. For example, the ref not calling this blatant foul on Terrence Mann added fuel to Curry's fire. To be fair, Curry was saucing up the Clipper defense all game long, but getting that disrespect from the officials made Steph a different animal. Following that non-call on Terrence Mann in the fourth quarter, Steph scored 11 points in just over three minutes, putting the game away in LA and putting on a show for the Clipper fans in attendance. Even when the crowd gets loud and the moment gets big, Curry and Kobe not only stay calm under pressure, but they lock in even more when there's even a slight indicator that something or someone is out to throw them off. When the lights shine brightest in the clutch, Bryant and Curry aren't only locked in, but they're supremely motivated to will their team over the top individually. Steph and Kobe would easily make a list of the top 10 clutches players of all time. Just like Kobe, Steph's made his fair share of clutch shots from the perimeter as well, as there's a 15 minute straight video on YouTube of him just hitting clutch shots in the playoffs, and there's no replays on it like there was in the Mamba video. But for next video shout out, Who's the clutchest player of all time in your opinion? The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is The Flesh, who says, I think what makes the Suns most lethal is their cohesiveness. Just by watching their games, you can tell they're not playing like five individual players. Pause to read the rest of that great take. Can't thank you all enough for the great comments and for 50k subscribers. This was DFlow. You guys are the best, and I'll see you next video.